welcome to another video. I watched Rachel Maxey's video the other day where she hand painted a faux leather skirt with Jeff Goldblum from the very first Jurassic Park movie. The, uh, the famous scene where he's, you know, lying there on the table, injured. It's awesome. I will link to that video up here and down below as well because if you haven't watched it, you totally should. She made that skirt to go and watch the new Jurassic World. I think I have that right. Dominion, Jurassic World Dominion movie and I thought you know what that's a really good idea I want to go see this movie I have dinosaur fabric I'm going to do something similar now this is my fabric and um, I've just ironed it from from afar it looks like a ditzy print right and then you get gloss and it's dinosaurs many dinosaurs there's, there's lots of dinosaurs in here. I'm not quite sure of all the different species, but we shall, you know, have a look and try and identify as many as possible. Parasaurolophus. I think these are Gallimimus. Triceratops. Stegosaurus. Pterodactyls. Velociraptors. I think there's a T-Rex. Yeah, dinosaurs. So my mum bought this for my brother many moons ago. It's a Liberty Tarnalon. So it's a very nice fabric and there is a lot left over. So I'm going to make myself a by hand London and a top. I'm going to sew it up and I'm going to wear it to watch Jurassic Park Dominion because why wouldn't I? <laughs> Let's get started. Loads of you have been asking me to show you how I fully line a top or a bodice and I do put that into every single sew along but I thought the this video could do as a order of operations that I follow for making up a fully lined bodice. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is mark your darts or tucks or anything, any kind of like shaping things that are involved in your top. So this one I have a dart in the back. So there's the point of my dart and I'm doing an open-ended dart so that there is some room over my hips. So there are the two legs of my dart. Now I have actually already marked those but I'm just showing you what I would do. So I've put my pins through all of those points and then I take my friction pen and as I say I've already marked this so these are a little bit off but I've made my marks there and then you kind of peel it back and you do the other side then you peel it back and do the inside of your fashion fabric once you've got those points marked you can take your pins out and again that was very roughly done because I have done this accurately beforehand one of the things I like to do is leave the pins around the top of the pattern piece when I'm doing this take all the pins out from around the bottom leave the top in place the pins in place and then mark my darts that way so now I'm done with my pattern piece I can put that to the side and then we'll do it on the white because it will show up better. But I've got my points there so I'm going to actually mark in the legs of my darts. I'm going to do that on both sides and I am using a friction pen so this comes away with heat. I will always say though you want to double check your friction pen does come away with heat without leaving a white residue by trying it on a scrap piece of fabric first, ironing it off and making sure that you're happy with the result. Friction pens also come back in cold weather, something to bear in mind. I've never had it happen to me when I'm wearing a dress but it is just something to bear in mind. So I'm going to do the same for these two back pieces and then the front pieces of my bodice as well. Mark the tucks and the darts in the same way. So now all my darts and tucks are marked into place. I'm going to need to pin them together so that I can sew them. You all know how to pin darts together. I'm going to show you how I do it with the tucks. So I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to put it through the top part of the first tuck and then find the top part of the second tuck and leave my pin like that. And then I do exactly the same for the bottom and then I'll kind of pinch the fabric and bring the fabric together underneath the pins and then actually secure the pins at the top and the bottom and then I will go through and secure the rest of the tuck into place. This fabric is quite easy to do because it's sort of semi sheer so I can see my lines quite well but you just want to put your pin through and double check that you're coming through the the line on the other side 
to make sure that you're going to sew those tucks nice and evenly. Now, this next tuck is way too close to this one for me to pin that at the same time. So I'm going to move on to the other side and then repeat the process for this one. So pin through the top, pin through the bottom, pinch the fabric, bring the fabric together and secure those first pins. Pin the rest of the tuck into place, making sure that the lines are meeting up, that you're not getting anything twisted, like so. So I'm going to continue pinning this, I'm going to pin the darts, I'm going to pin the darts in the back, I'm going to do the fashion fabric front and back as well, and then I'll get all of these pieces sewn. And I like to do every single part of the, so like every single tuck, every single dart, all at once at the beginning. That is my first part of my order of operations of how I put a top together. So get your tucks and darts sewn into place. For the tucks, I'm going to backstitch at the start sew up and backstitch at the end. For the darts I'll backstitch at the start but then I'll sew off of the point, leave myself a nice long thread tail, tie a knot and trim the threads off. And that's just so you don't end up with any puckers at the end of the dart where you backstitch and that's just my preferred method. I know everyone has different preferences, you do you, but sew all your darts and tucks first. So now all of my pieces have got their darts and tucks into them. Next thing I'm going to do is sew up the shoulder seams. Now my philosophy is that I want to do as much at the sewing machine as I possibly can before I have to get up and go and press. And as long as you are not sewing crossing seams, or crossing streams, don't cross the streams, then you can get as much sewn as possible. So I am going to sew the shoulder seams of the lining to the shoulder seams of the lining front and the same for the main bodice. Then I'm going to take everything over to the ironing board to press everything because the next thing that I need to do is sew the neckline together which means that I would be crossing over these shoulder seams here so that's why these need to be pressed open. So I'm going to get these sewn together at the shoulder seams only and take it over to the ironing board and press everything and I'm going to press my back darts towards the center, shoulder seams open, bust darts down and I'm going to press my tucks. I'm going to centre the fabric over it and press those flat and I'm going to do that for the lining and for the outer. So as I mentioned I have pressed everything. I have also put on some of the lightweight interfacing where the zip's going to go later. I tend to do that with cotton lawns and viscoses just to help the stabilise the area where the zip will go. So the next thing that I am going to do is put the outer and the lining right sides together and sew around the neckline. Now eventually this is actually going to be a complete circle and sewn the, um, because the, I like to put the zip with the bottom of the zip here closing downwards so that I can get this over my bust to actually do it up. I tried doing it the other way and uh, there wasn't enough room. Eventually the entire neckline will be sewn shut but because of the way I want to finish the armholes I'm only going to sew it from an inch away, well maybe two inches away from the raw edge. So I'm going to match up the, seam, the shoulder seams, match up all of the uh, raw edges, pin this together and sew at five eighths of an inch the whole way around or whatever seam allowance the pattern you're using calls for. And then I'm going to leave the last sort of two inches flapping free as it were so that I can get my zip in and turn things through the way that I like to then finish this off later. So neckline is sewn. Next thing I'm going to do is clip into the curves so that I can turn this through, understitch it, then press it. And I prefer to do understitching before I press because I find that the understitching helps me press. But you do need to clip into the curves so that the understitching will be smooth. So I'm doing that all the way around the curvy parts of this neckline and now I'm going to understitch and again because I have left those last couple of inches open I'm going to understitch to again about two inches away from where the that line of stitching finishes and that's just so that I can get in here later and sew the rest of the neckline together 
nicely and then continue and finish the understitching nicely you want to be able to access this line of stitching and if you if you finish the understitching too closely it gets quite difficult you can end up with a little tuck there so i am now going to bring the lining over and make sure that i'm keeping all of the seam allowance towards the lining and i'm going to understitch just over an eighth of an inch away from my original stitching line and that's going to help to keep the lining on the inside so that you don't see any peaks of white when you're wearing the top. So I have done all my understitching. Now again, you need to press this but I don't need to press this quite yet because the next thing that I'm going to do is sew up the armholes and that seam is not crossing the understitching seam. Don't cross the streams. So I can do this step next and then go and press everything. I'm gonna turn it so that I have got the fabric, the correct fabric side up. I'm gonna sew it with the armholes together, with the right sides together, but I'm gonna offset the lining by about an eighth of an inch. So when I pin this together, I'm pinning it so that the lining is an eighth of an inch past the raw edge of the fashion fabric. And that's just again, so that the lining will sit on the inside of the garment. So the very bottom of the sleeve, I've got the raw edges matching up, but then as I say, I'm gonna bring the lining so that there's a peak of one eighth of an inch of the lining past the fashion fabric. And I'm gonna pin that into place. And then I'm gonna sew these at the seam allowance of the pattern from underarm to underarm. Okay, so hopefully you can see there that the lining is just peeking out about an eighth of an inch past the raw edge of the fashion fabric. I'm going to do the same for both sides and I'm going to sew from underarm seam to underarm seam at the seam allowance that the pattern allows for on both sides. Now that the sleeves are finished or the armholes are finished this is one of my favorite parts of any particular make it's just like magic I'm going to reach through between the lining and the outer grab hold of the back of the top and pull it through I'm going to do the same for the other side and we now have nicely finished armholes and a nicely finished neckline. Now is the time to press because the next thing that we're going to do is sew up the side seams. So I'm going to go and get these pressed and nicely flat. I'm going to press the neckline first which will then help me press the armholes because as I've mentioned the interior is now slightly smaller so it's going to want to roll to the inside. Once that's done we're going to come back and pin the side seams. So I have pressed the armholes and the neckline. So the next thing we're going to do is sew up the side seams. Now this particular top does have quite an acute curve at the underarm. It's fine, you can totally do it, but just be aware of that. So I'm gonna pin the right sides of the fashion fabric together, and then also the right sides of the lining together, and then I am going to sew them with the patterns seam allowance. I am going to nest the seams at the underarm and you're just gonna have to be really careful if there is an acute curve like this. Just sort of take your time, rearrange, go slowly and make sure that you maintain the seam allowance the whole way around. If you're worried about it, you can always draw your seam allowance in with a, a dissolvable marker or a friction pen. So I'm gonna pin the underarm seam first and I've got the seam allowance on this one going that way and the seam allowance on the underneath one going the opposite way so they're nested. Then I'll pin the rest of this into place and sew this up with the seam allowance the pattern recommends. So I've pinned the second side seam in the same manner but I have put three orange pins here. I use orange pins to remind myself that I need to do something. So what I'm going to do is sew this in the same manner until I get to this orange pin. I'm going to back stitch then I'm going to increase my stitch length to the longest my machine will do and stitch down here to the second pin reduce the stitch length, back stitch, and then finish off the rest of that seam. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be turning the top through this opening in the side seam once the top is complete. I like to, rather than leave it open and not do any stitching there, I like to do the longest basting stitch possible so that I can press it and give myself a memory for hand stitching later. And of course you can do that without the basting stitching in, but I just find that you get a really accurate press that way because you have sewn in your seam allowance. So I'm going to start at this end, sew to this first pin, back stitch, um, increase my stitch length to basting all the way along here, decrease the stitch length, back stitch at the second 
or the third in this case orange pin and then finish off the rest of that seam so I do have some very acute curves underneath the armhole so I am going to clip into those just to release some of the tension and allow this to turn through and sit and wear nicely and I'm going to do the same on both sides right so now that I've got my underarms clipped I'm going to go and press these side seams open and then we can start putting in the zip definitely starting to look like a top so next thing I'm going to do is sew in my zip I would have liked to have gone for a white zip but I didn't have one so I went for this orange one because I thought it kind of picked out the colors of the dinosaurs so I'm going to get this sewn into place along the bottom and it's going to be as I mentioned the end of the zip is going to be up towards the neckline and the opening of the zip is down at the hemline of the top and that's so that the top opens out fully and I can get in and out of it easily. I've worn a couple of these, I've made more than a couple of these, I've worn them quite a lot and I haven't found that the zipper pull gets in my way or is annoying being down at the end. So I'm going to get this sewn into place. For me, for the way I like to finish my zippers, I put the end of my zipper at the actual raw edge of my fabric and then when I sew the lining to the right side of the fabric to finish off the hem that will enclose this, this edge and, and make sure that the zip pull is right at the end of the top. Again I'm going to show you that when we come to it. I'm also going to link down below a couple of different videos for how to install invisible zips. I use my invisible zip foot and I sew each side of the zip to the fabric with the fabric open. I know there are loads of other different methods. Loads of you guys recommend different methods to me whenever you see me do it this way. I like this way so this is how I'm going to get it done. I have sewn in the invisible zip which is going to once it's been pressed, it hasn't been pressed yet, it's going to zip up like that. And thankfully it is nice and invisible even though it's bright orange. So the next thing that I need to do is finish off the back neckline. So I'm going to reach through, pull this around, and I'm going to pin together the back, the top of the, well, the top of the back neckline and sew that shut and I'm going to use my zipper foot to get close to but not right up to the stitching the same way you would finish off a skirt. I'm going to do the same with the lining piece which I am going to sew down the top edge the same amount that I'm going to need to sew this one up. So from the where the zip finishes to the neck edge is four and a half inches so I will sew four and a half inches down on the lining piece as well which means that I can then finish the neckline. I have somehow managed to lose the clip of me sewing up the back of the neckline. Once the back seam has been sewn together above the zip you then need to iron that seam open so everything lies nice and flatly, match up the seams and sew the remaining portion of the neckline closed, finish off the understitching and press. The neck edge is now nice and cleanly finished and pressed. So the next thing that I need to do is work out how I am going to finish off the edge of my zip and my lining. Now, <laughs> this, is, this always makes me, my head hurt a little bit. There is a way of doing this by machine without creating a Mobius loop. So we will work this out. Okay, so. I need to sew the raw edge of the lining to the raw edge of the top sandwiching in the zip. They're taking my lining piece and matching up the raw edge with the raw edge. I'm going to then turn things through, pin it into place and I'm then going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the zipper teeth so that the zip isn't interfered with with the lining and everything will run nice and smoothly. So the trick for this is, and getting this the right way out, and believe me, I have made this mistake many times. This is the same as when I do armholes. So I've got my top the wrong way out and I've got my lining, this is the right side of my lining I can see here, and I'm gonna put the right side of my lining to the right side of my top my fashion fabric sandwiching in the zip and if you are worried about things going awry when you're turning things through pin it into place so that you can then reach through the two layers and get the rest of the zip out and out like this 
So yeah, we are going to be sewing the lining to the right side of the right side of the lining to the right side of the fashion fabric sandwiching the zip in between and you're going to want to go as close as you can to the previous line of stitching there will be a small bit of hand stitching that you'll need to do at the end but that's totally fine so i'm going to get that stitched into place using my regular zipper foot like i say i'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the zipper teeth so that the zipper pull doesn't get interfered with with the lining and i'm going to do exactly the same for the other side so that's the first side done so if i reach through and turn it through then you can see that we've got one side nice and cleanly finished obviously this will need to be ironed so i'm going to do exactly the same for the other side start with the lining side out so i'm going to take the right side of the lining and match it up with the right side of the fashion fabric sandwiching in the zip i will pin this into place so that I can then manhandle the fabric and things won't go awry because I really don't want to sew this incorrectly. So again, just reach through the top, bring everything so it's easily sewn and I'm going to pin this into place and then I'll sew this side of the zip again a quarter of an inch away from the teeth so that the lining doesn't interfere with the zipper pull. I will need to just slip stitch the top into place. I think next time what I'll do is actually sew the lining about half an inch more than the outer fabric so that that way it i'm not the reason i'm having to stop a little bit sooner and i'm going to end up with a small gap is because of the zipper pull so if i sew the lining in about an inch inch and a half longer than i sew the outer when i do the top edge finishing off the neckline that will mean that i won't into this i can do this stage without interfering with the zipper pull so i'm going to pin these get this pinned into place get this sewn and then we could sew up the hem. I have got my lining into place. As I said, there's a little gap at the top here, which I am just going to slip stitch closed. And next time I will just sew that down an inch further so that I don't have to con uh, contend with the zipper pull. So once that's all pressed, that will the zip will run nicely and the lining is now finished. So the next thing we're going to do is turn it all through again so that the right sides are together. We are going to match up the bottom edge and you're going to match up the side seams and basically so that at your hem allowance whichever whatever your pattern calls for this one is five eighths of an inch so i'm going to sew the whole way across the bottom edge get that edge completely finished then i'm going to unpick my basing that i've done here on the side seam and turn that entire top through but we need to sew the bottom edge first i have sewn up the hem of the top now i need to clip the corners so that they will turn through nicely and we get rid of any bulk. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Right, so the next thing, as I mentioned, we need to do is unpick the basting stitches that we put into this side seam earlier, which should be really easy to do because I use the longest stitch length available on the machine and it's giving me a nice crisp edge that I'll be able to follow when I slip stitch this closed in just a second but I've given myself probably about six inches here so the next thing to do is turn the top through this opening so literally feed the entire thing through the lining and then start bringing it all out so most edges are nice and pressed like the neck edge is fine armholes are fine it's the bottom edge and the interior of the zip and the zip lining that have not been pressed so i'm going to reach in poke through my corners And I'm going to go and give this a quick press so that the lining is pressed nicely away from the zip and also then the bottom edge is nice and crisp. Then there's a little bit of hand stitching to do and we'll be done. Top is done 
and the edges are pressed and the interior is nicely finished. The only thing I have left to do is slip stitch the hole in the side seam where I turned it through and a little bit of slip stitching at the top of the lining just to close that up so that I don't have any raw edges that can um, escape. So a little bit of um, hand stitching there, get rid of any threads and then a little bit of hand stitching there and the top is done. And this is my preferred method for fully lining a top with a back zip. I absolutely love this. I mean, it's gonna come as a surprise to absolutely none of you, but I really, really, really love this shape on me. It looks awesome with the denim and the tan. I can totally wear this with my cream skirt as well. I could wear this with blue. So yeah, very, very happy with how this turned out. I hope you found the video useful. This is how I line most bodices and tops if they don't come with a lining. I think the biggest thing that I do differently is the sewing of the arm finishings, like the armholes, the sleeve, these little sleeves on this one, but the armholes. I think that is the major difference. The majority of patterns I see will have you hand finish these or do them slightly differently but I prefer this method which is why I do it and hopefully you found it useful and it made sense that this is the order of operations to get this result with the least amount of hand sewing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with hand sewing. If you enjoy it then that is awesome and I always have a little bit of hand sewing in every project that I do but I do prefer the sturdiness and stability that I get from machine stitches I just I feel I feel more confident in them than I do my own hand sewing and that's because I don't sew construction stitches very often not that this would take a lot of wear and tear in slip stitching this into place is what the pattern usually calls for so as I said I hope you found this video useful if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I will see you again very soon bye